A simple box model is a whole building energy model used to test the impact of fundamental design decisions on energy consumption and peak heating and cooling loads. The appropriate level of detail in the model depends on the state of the design. So during pre-design, the model may look like a simple box, as you see there on the left. And during conceptual design, the model typically represent a simplified version of one or more design concepts. So what makes a building energy model a simple box model? Uh, it's simple, it's accurate enough to provide useful information, and it's quick to develop. So these characteristics make it useful for informing early design decisions. This type of analysis is a, this type of analysis is most useful before significant building design decisions have been finalized, typically during conceptual design. But it can also be very useful during pre-design. So a sensitivity study with simple models can provide the design team with useful information to consider when developing design concepts. Later during schematic design, a simple model may still be useful for evaluating design alternatives like window shading example shown here. What is it not? Uh, well, a simple box model is not the same thing as a shoebox model. And while the terms are sometimes used interchangeably, the common definition of a shoebox model is one that represents an isolated portion of a building, such as a single room, while a simple box model typically represents a whole building. Now, both can be very useful, though a simple box model can be used to answer typically a wider range of design questions. So let's look at a few examples of design questions that might be addressed with a simple box model. What is the impact on, of window area on energy use or on peak cooling load? So fenestration design is certainly a fundamental design decision. And since simple box modeling can be very quick, it can provide feedback early and while the design concept is still being developed. So another question, which envelope components contribute most to peak cooling load? So this information can help optimize the envelope design to focus on investment on components with the most impact. Is it the walls, the roof, window conduction or window solar? And this info might show that an extra investment in envelope performance, like for better windows, can reduce the load enough to downsize the HVAC system and maybe offset the cost of those better windows. So which energy end uses contribute the most energy, most to energy use intensity? So a simple box model can estimate how much the energy is consumed for each end use, like fans, uh, cooling, heating, interior lighting or plug loads. And this information can be really useful on projects with energy performance goals. It helps to focus attention on the systems that are responsible for the most energy consumption. Another question, which of three building massing options provides the best performance? Or related question, what is the impact of changing orientation? A simple box model is great for exploring the relative performance of different design concepts like these. Um, so, you know, how much does the performance vary between these options? Does it make a difference or not? So the simple box model can help answer that question using whatever information is known at the time, like perhaps just the building location and the occupancy type. And then it can show which features have the biggest impact on performance and then which are less important. How about, is this concept design likely to meet the 2030 challenge energy target? That's a question you might face on your design projects or a similar related question, can it achieve net zero carbon emissions? So a simple box model analysis can help you figure out if your design's on the right track. And if you're not, the model can be used to test changes that might get it there. One important thing to keep in mind when you're asking questions like these, 
where we want an, an estimate of the actual future energy consumption is that a simple box model is quick and simple. And it'll probably be based on lots of assumptions about things like the HVAC system performance and the building operation. So at this stage, uh, this energy estimate is best used for comparing alternatives and finding the best design solution. Then as the design progresses, it'll be possible to get more confident estimate of total energy consumption and to verify that the design is still on track to meet those performance goals. Now the question is which measures contribute to meeting the energy target? So success in meeting an aggressive target often requires a package of measures. So a set of models with incremental changes can show how much each change contributes to the total savings. So these measures could be things like insulation or window shading, efficient lighting or HVAC system features, for example. So I've shown just a few examples of potential design questions. For more inspiration, uh, check out this resource from the American Institute of Architects, the Architect's Guide to Building Performance. So it has examples of common questions that can be answered using energy modeling and, and other types of building performance simulation. Simple box modeling, what is it good for? The most common subjects for simple box model analysis are aspects of the architectural design. So things such as the building form or the fenestration design and opaque envelope component specifications. So, you know, what makes it good for these kinds of analyses? Well, they're important, first of all, um, they affect the thermal loads, which affects HVAC sizing and energy consumption. And second, many of these decisions are made early. So you need a quick, simple method to do the analysis. Um, third, you know, energy models do a good job at these things. That's what energy simulation programs are really designed for. And fourth, you know, it's hard to evaluate the performance impact of these types of measures, except with an energy model. So these are all you know, relative performance analyses comparing alternatives, which is a great application for energy simulation. Daylight energy savings potential. So an energy model is also good for a rough estimate of energy savings potential from daylighting controls. And most simulation programs can estimate indoor daylight illuminance at each hour and adjust the lighting power accordingly. Now these methods are pretty simple, um, especially compared to specialized daylighting simulation software, but the methods used by these energy simulation programs are good enough for an estimate of the potential savings. And they also capture the impact on heating and cooling loads. Natural ventilation savings potential. So many simulation programs can also model the impact of natural ventilation, which can be course, an effective strategy for space cooling and ventilation in some climates. And natural ventilation calculations depend on a lot of assumptions. And in real life, the performance of natural ventilation often depends on occupant behavior. But this simple analysis can show the savings potential. Um, it might show, for example, the value of an investment in features like operable windows. So this chart shows results of a model with natural ventilation and shows the fraction of the cooling load that can be handled via natural ventilation each month. This chart shows the energy savings potential of using operable windows with an interlock switch to cut off delivery of air. That's one potential natural ventilation strategy. So it cuts off the ventilation or cuts off the HVAC whenever the windows open. Resilience is becoming a more important issue for building designers. So energy modeling programs can be used to provide a rough estimate of space temperature and how that might change uh, when there's a loss of cooling, you know, which might be due to a, a power outage or system failure. So this illustration shows one hot day and under normal operation, the HVAC system is turned on in the morning and the space is cooled to a set point. 
If, for example, cooling is lost at noon, then the space temperature will start to rise and the rate of change will be different in spaces with low thermal mass and with high thermal mass. So the simulation result can estimate how long the space temperature will remain comfortable in both of those cases. A simple box model can also be used to check if a concept design is on track for net zero energy or net zero carbon emissions. So the model provides the estimate of the electricity and gas consumption and CO2 emission factors can be used to translate that energy consumption into CO2 emissions. And then a separate calculation can estimate energy production by on-site photovoltaics, for instance, and the corresponding emissions avoided. So this kind of you know, quick early analysis can show, are you on track? Or perhaps you need to find ways to reduce energy consumption or uh, increase the area available for a PV system. Now, simple box modeling is typically performed using the same HVAC system for all cases, but uh, comparative analysis of different system types is possible and it can be important at an early design stage. So this kind of comparison is especially valuable when considering system choices that affect the architectural design due to different space or structural requirements. So some HVAC system types like the uh, variable air volume reheat that delivers overhead air uh, requires space for ducts above the ceiling. Other system types like radiant heating or cooling can get by with less space because they rely on pipes rather than ducts for distribution. And uh, underfloor air distribution and displacement ventilation work best with higher ceilings and may also affect the floor to floor height. So it's, a, it's important to keep in mind that an HVAC comparison does require careful attention to model inputs so that the comparison turns out to be realistic. So it's important that somebody knowledgeable with these systems should be involved in that kind of analysis. So to summarize what a simple box modeling analysis is really good for, it's uh, to inform architectural design, to identify high priority strategies, um, the ones that have the highest or biggest impact, and to track performance versus targets like the 2030 challenge or net zero carbon emissions goals. So how about uh, some questions about simple box modeling? Is it accurate? So building energy simulation programs are quite accurate when we provide accurate inputs. And that's clearly a challenge when creating a simple box model, which is done you know, at a very early stage when many assumptions will be necessary. Um, it's especially useful for comparing alternatives. So the relative performance of different designs is less sensitive to those assumptions we make compared to uh, an estimate of absolute energy consumption, which leads to the final point it can be useful for absolute energy consumption estimation with good inputs. So who's responsible for simple box modeling? Well, this is of course a trick question. Um, in a successful project, there's usually a role for everyone. So design questions, how do you make sure that design questions are relevant? Well, this can't be left to the modeler alone. Um, how about identifying appropriate inputs? The modeler will typically take the lead, but it's extremely valuable to get feedback from the designer and other team members, because remember that we need good inputs for an accurate model. And then who does the modeling and the evaluation? Um, that should be somebody with a strong understanding of the tool and the systems to be evaluated. And then finally, communication and integration. Those are of course team efforts and are key for a successful project.